Hey everybody, Terry D-Lab. I have another Fender Deluxe Reverb on the bench. This one is in 1967. In this video we're going to do an initial inspection and testing of the unit and I'm going to point out all the things that you should never do to a Fender amp if it comes to your repair shop. Alright, I'll start my inspection by sweeping the front of the amp you can see the control panel looks pretty good for its years of use. Thank God there's no additional holes or switches added. So that's a big plus. Now let's inspect the top side of the chassis. First thing I noticed, power transformer is not original. It's been replaced. Looks like just a generic replacement. Choke is original. Output transformer not original. There's a mismatch of tubes but the most alarming thing is take a look under the 6v6 yep it's those cheap ceramic sockets and unfortunately they have all been replaced with those same type sockets. Huge bummer okay I had a video where I covered these sockets in the past. They're actually a two-piece socket. And when you take them apart, the terminals were all corroded. And I'm sure that this poor thing is going to meet that same fate. As we keep going across top side, there's more things that just broke my heart. Number one, somebody put all their nice artwork with permanent marker all over this chassis. Look at these filter caps. It's those Illinois caps that are famous for leaking. I guess they're okay to use guys but I wouldn't put these in my classic Fender amp. Here is some more artwork from past maintenance. I don't know what all this meant. Here it says CSA tester. Is that certified amplifier tester? I don't know what it is. Here's another note from other past maintenance. Guys, if you're going to do work on an amp, don't write all over the chassis with what you did. Put that on the invoice or maybe a note to the owner. But now, this is permanent. Okay, we'll sweep the bottom of the amp now. We've got some more artwork up here. Look there, it's a 1967 chassis. Glad that's on there, I wouldn't have known. And somebody said, hey, I did a cap upgrade and I rev both channels and a new transformer and power in and out in 1994. Good thing. <laughs> All right, so here is the replacement power transformer. There are a few good things. The 470 ohm screen resistors have been changed and they added the 1 ohm shunts. So they're obviously measuring the current through the tubes, right? But when you look at the eyelet board, it is a mess right there's a lot of mold on it got some silicone just a mismatch of different caps and resistors a lot of them have just been gobbed into place and somebody also modified both channels so they do not match the print of the original deluxe which is a super bar alright so I've had some discussion with the owner about the condition of the amp the fact that it's been highly modified and there's some substandard components installed and what he wants me to do at this point is just try to get the amp to sound like a fender again so I have to go in there and clean up the eyelet board we're gonna leave those sockets installed and if he's happy we'll call it good if not we'll do a full restoration on the amp and that's actually what it deserves as you guys know these black face fenders command a pretty high price and if you get in an amp like this and do that you've just destroyed the value okay if you're gonna keep it yourself I guess that's okay but if you ever decide that you want to sell it and somebody that collects these sees that they're gonna turn and go the other way okay test time we're on the normal channel using the D-Lab dummy head box so there's a load of resistor in here and then we go direct to the scope audio generator is around 700 Hertz I just want to make sure that both channels work sine wave actually doesn't look bad but 
with all those old original electrolytic caps on the eyelet board, more than likely that mid-range punch that you normally get is not going to be there. So yeah, both channels are working. Normal and vibrato are operational. I don't have the reverb tank on and I'm not going to test the tremolo at this point. I just want to make sure that the amp worked. Well, there it is everybody. You get to see what I'm going to have to deal with. You know, I can do the repair. I can make this amp sound good again, but the cosmetic damage I can't repair. You know, if that was Leo Fender and he got in there and signed all kinds of stuff and wrote the story of his life, it'd be different. But in this case, people got in there and defaced the amp. I mean, I can understand they're probably proud of their work and they'd like to see their name propagate out there, you know, on these old amps around the country, but the next guy that gets it is not going to appreciate that. So, word of advice, guys, if you're going to work on these amps, don't do that and put in good quality parts. Because if you do that, then the next guy won't be faced with this.